And then, of course, there's Shaney, Shaney Wallace. Lovely girl who I've known for many years, who plays, uh, not all that many, of course, she's not all that old. But uh, she plays Nancy. And, well, let's face it, who better to introduce now than Shaney Wallace? Harry, you're just as crazy as ever. You know, I, I have to tell you, I've known Harry for a long, long time. And uh, we first met when I was doing television. And we did quite a lot of television together. I think he is the nicest man I know in the whole of show business. I think that's saying something. And he always keeps everybody in fits of laughter. Thank you. I'm happy to be uh, with you. Oh, absolutely, it is. It, unquestionably, it is. It's a terrific opportunity for me. And uh, this part, I would think, is like the, what do you call it, the coup of the year, because it's, it's full of guts and full of strength, and um, it's not at all pretty, pretty. It's, it's something I've, I've really enjoyed, because it, it's taken a long time, of course. You know, sometimes uh, movies are over in about three months. Of course, when I first took it on, I thought, oh, just, you know, they are be through in about uh, three months, four months, and uh, beyond to the next thing, you know. Of course, something as large as this and as important as this takes a lot of time and a lot of thought. My goodness, that goes back about eight years. Did you know that? I mean, the first conception of it. Well, you know, I've done a lot of training in my life. I've, I've always enjoyed to sing ever since I was about three years old. And I've studied and I've studied and uh, professionally I've worked, I would say, 15 years. My aim was to say one of these days I'm going to be a big movie star, you know, and I um, always wanted to go to America. I spent most of my career in England, and I worked in all the American shows you can think of here in England. Wish you were here, wonderful town, call me mad and bells ringing, you know. And then uh, eventually I got a chance to do America, and I was there for four years, and it was tough. It was, it was lovely. It was all lovely, but it was very tough. It took quite a while to get the people in America to... Uh, in, uh, know who I, I am and what I do and then I went into a Broadway show called A Time for Singing I don't know whether you remember that it was the story of How Green Was My Valley which as you know is a lovely film and uh, it was all in period of course and Ed Sullivan saw me and um, wanted me to go on the show so I said of course and I dressed up in my costume and I sang a song from the, from the play and the next day uh, Mike Frankovich of Columbia Pictures rang and said, and I'd known him for years. I knew him in England. All the time I was doing Irma Ladoos, which was about two years, I knew him in England. Never approached him, never ever did anything for him in films. And he said to me, um, how long are you going to be in New York? I said, as long as the play runs. He said, as soon as it's finished, you come out to California because I've got something for you. And this was it. Oliver. Yes, of course, I had to go through a lot. I mean, I had to do record, recording tests, I had to do film tests, and all the rest. You know, all the usual things that everybody has to go through. And I thought, it's impossible, I can't get this part. It's, it's just too wonderful. And uh, there it was. <laughs> it was like, I was a bit stunned for a while. I, I could hardly believe it. Yes, oh yes, well you know, all the sort of original people that played it. And so I hear Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton were approached to do it, and I don't think it fitted into their schedule. And uh, I think Gene Simmons was interested in doing it, and I think quite a lot of people were. But I'm glad to say it was me. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm so happy. Oh, they are glorious, too. I had uh, p tremendous enjoyment out of doing uh, As Long As He Needs Me. It's a... Uh, Great song, beautiful music, great words. And it expresses her so well, that particular point in the film, because she really adores this man. And really, you, I don't think she understands why she does, because he's so awful to her. And uh, at this particular point, he, he wants her to do something which is detrimental to Oliver. And uh, she doesn't want to do it. And she says, no, I won't. And he says, yes, you will. And it gets to a point where he gets hold of her and swipes her and says, you will do it. And of course she will. Against her will, she will, because she loves him. And that's when she sings this song, which is really an excuse. She's excusing herself. She says, as long as he needs me, I'll do it. 
Oh, yes, he does need me, you know. That's the, the feeling that the song has, and I hope you enjoy it. Well, that's why I hope that when people see it, that they will, um, they will feel what I'm feeling. That's what I want to try and get over. Four. Uh, I do anything with the kids, you know. Another song called It's Fine Life, which is very gay. This is at the beginning of the film. She's very happy. She's on top of the world. She's got a man that she adores and uh, all's right with the world sort of thing. And the last one that I do, which comes near the end of the film, is called Um Papa. It's a real pub song, oh. English pub song. Boy, oh boy, I am so glad that we have Honor White and her associate, Tommy Panko, because they have done a brilliant job. They are very sympathetical people. They're great fun. They understand you. And they work, boy, they work you because they're two big American people. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people know them. But uh, I've had great fun with them. When they were working with me, and making me exercise for the dancing that I do in the film. It wasn't just me. I mean, they did everything that they wanted me to do. So it wasn't just sitting back and saying, OK, now do your exercises. No, they, they get up and they do it too. We'd all do it together. Oh, boy. Well, because Oliver, I don't know how he was found. I'm sure, I believe Sir Carol Reed said he saw 2,000 boys or something ridiculous like that. He found this angelic little face that is not to be believed. He's just perfect for the role. He's only seven, eight. Oh, he must be eight by now. I remember he was seven at the beginning of the film, so. But then, of course, is uh, the artful Dodger. Now, he's a little boy that is really tough, a real cockney, and I think he's going to be another Tony Newley. Truly, I do. He's so great. And uh, Jack Wilde is his name, you know, and uh, he's, he's, he's going to be really something. I'm sure of it. He's about 13. Something yep. ridiculous like that, and he's so tiny. Oh, <laughs> they're all men, of, I'm sure, the little midgets of 50 years old. It's amazing. I've never seen so many all at once, of course. I mean, when I see Honor White and Tommy Panko doing scenes and choreographing these kids, 70 at a time, 100 at a time, I mean, that's, that's quite something. You see them, they get the megaphones out, and it's hard to keep kids in order. I mean, you know, they have those hot lights, they go under those hot lights while they're filming, and they get tired, and they want to talk, and I think it's, it's, it's fantastic, the job that they did. His approach is, of course, naturally, for the dramatic side. And he wants to get every ounce out of you for those dramatic scenes. But the extraordinary thing is that he loves music. He's never done a musical before, and he doesn't know the first thing about music. He'll tell you that himself, but he loves it. He goes into absolute ecstasy, you know, when he hears something being played, you know, some of the music or when you're singing and takes a great pride and a great interest in it. I, I can't say enough about him. He's, uh, he's helped me a great deal and I find him very easy to work with. Well, it's easy. I know that sounds crazy in a way because I was not brought up in the East End of London. She's a prostitute. She's a rough and ready girl. She has a heart of gold. But I am a Cockney. And that's the way I've, be, I've been brought up as a Cockney. And I know about her. I've had a lot of friends like her. I still have a lot of friends like her. I can understand her quite well, I think. I'm terribly excited. I'm very thankful and very grateful that I should have had this opportunity because I know there are a lot of people in show business that have a, a great deal of talent and sometimes don't get that big break. So uh, I'm taking it with everything, everything I've got. And I hope everybody's going to enjoy it as much as I have. I can tell you that. Yes, uh, Um Papa comes at a very important and dramatic moment in the play because she is going to take this young boy, Oliver, back to where he belongs. She knows she's double-crossing the man she loves but she just knows she has to do it because this boy is young. She's grown up in, a, in an area that is 
She's full of thieves. She's seen all the children grow up as thieves, and she she knows this boy is different. She feels that he's not for that kind of life. But Bill Sykes is there, and she hears some of the group starting to sing a song called Um Papa, and she thinks this is the this is the way I can do it, and she starts to sing Um Papa. And she gets everybody singing. And they start to dance, and it gets bigger and bigger. And all the excitement is going. And that is the moment when she can steal away without anybody seeing her. And that's how she gets Oliver out of the pub, out of the cripples, to get to London Bridge. And of course you know that uh, eventually Bill Sykes uh, follows her and uh, kills her.